Hey there, welcome to another Excel video. So this one was actually by request from one of my girlfriend's friends who said, Jed, can you please teach me pivot tables? Because I don't know anything about pivot tables. And so this one goes out to you, B. I hope you enjoy. So let's say I have a data set like so. I'm just going to kind of ex separate this a little bit just so it's a little bit easier to see. Let's just make this column. And the font I like using is Consolas, okay, right? Ugh, I don't know what that was. So let's just make this bold, and I just want to put a border on it, just so it's easier to kind of see. Okay, so pretty simple. We have a table, and what you notice is the information goes downwards, okay? Right, always downwards. If you have something that looks like this, let's say, goes across, you're not really going to be able to use pivot tables, okay? Because table information is not really organized this way in databases. It's always going down because you can have, if you go all the way down to the Excel, you can have that many rows. It's much easier to have rows than it is columns in databases. So when it comes to this kind of information for pivot tables, always has to be going downwards, okay? First rule. The other thing is if you have things that are common, just make sure they are common. If this one's called furnitures, just clean it up. Okay, now to actually do a pivot table, you have to have a few things set up. The first is you gotta have you gotta have labels, right, or field headings or column headings, whatever you might call it. That has to be in the first position of your table. If you have something uh, like that, it's, it's not really a good idea. So just be sure to get rid of it. Okay, and I'm just gonna make this money. Okay just so it's easier to see and we'll get rid of this. And so let's say this is my business. I sell furniture, office supplies, technologies. And within those, I'm selling different things, right? So in the furniture, I'm selling bookcases, chairs, furnishings, tables, office supplies, I'm selling a bunch of things, technology, I'm selling a bunch of things, right? And so what a pivot table does, it kind of like condenses your information or expands or it groups it and it does it quite dynamically and you just drag and drop. So it's really, really simple. So what you want to do first is select your table like so, right? Make sure you get those headings. If you do this, it won't work, okay? You need to select your headings because this is your identifiers. Then what we want to do is we want to go into insert and you want to select this button right here, pivot table. Go ahead and do that. And this funky little menu, all it's, all it's asking me is, do you want it like somewhere on this sheet or do you want it on a new sheet, okay? So in this example, we're going to go existing worksheet and we're just going to place it right there. Okay, that's all you got to do. If you don't know how to do that, let's do that again. Okay, that's it. And that'll automatically create it. And we go, okay. And now you have your pivot table. All right, so let's zoom out a little bit. And you're going to notice if I actually, is it possible to do a better? Yeah, that'll do. You'll notice now that each of your field headings, right, are now over here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change to blue. I've never really used blue before. No, nah, that makes me uncomfortable. All right. <laughs> and what you want to do is to bring this pivot table window up, you got to be in this area. Okay. So if you're freaking out, it's like, where's my field list? It's because you're not in the area. Okay. And what we can do is let's say I want to know the total sales for furniture. Okay. I can actually bring categories into your rows. It's going to bring them and it's going to automatically what we call aggregate or combine or consolidate, right? It's not going to show furniture four times, okay? Because it's the same thing. If I bring in subcategory, it's going to split it again. So if I bring that in here, oh, columns, it's going to split it again, okay? And I can take that out. I can just check it out like that. I can click it, unclick it, right? Pretty simple. And if I drop sales into my values, it's going to automatically sum them up for me, okay? Then I can split it up again. So let's say I want to bring the subcategory in because I'm like, well, what's the split? I can do that, right? I can actually move things around. So I can have things going this way. I can have them going that way as well, right? So if I bring, if I move category to columns, it now splits it at the top, okay, as you can see. And so the pivot table or sometimes known as a cross tab is because you have data going this way right, for your rows, and then columns going this way, okay? So then if I go furniture, bookcases, that's the result there, 
Okay, sort of like a word find, right? Um, we can also put in, let's say, I don't want sales, I actually want profit. I can drop that in there, it'll replace it. Again, it's really easy because you're just you're just dragging and dropping. And no matter how big your information get, gets, the, the concept is the same, right? So let's say I want to ask a different question. Let's say I've got my categories, right? And I want to move that into rows, okay? I want to know how many subcategories there are in each category, okay? So instead of bringing subcategory into rows, I'm going to bring it into values, okay? And it's going to do a count. Now, the reason it didn't do a sum is because this data type isn't a number. So Excel is actually going to read it and go, it's not a number, so I'm going to count instead by default. Because if I sum bookcases, it's nothing. They're just words. You can't add words together, okay? So you can do that. Um, if you right, if you click on this little triangle here, there are some other uh, settings you can do. I'm not going to do it for this one. I'm going to do it for sales. So let's bring sales back here, okay? I can click on this triangle, go value field settings. I can change it from sum. I can change it to count. I can do averages. I can do maximum, minimums. I can do all sorts of things. You can do vari uh, variation of variances, standard deviations, right? And again, you just click it, you apply. So let's say max, I go okay. It just shows me the maximum of any category. So let's say furniture, this 247 is actually that one right here because it's the maximum value. Again, it's a drag and drop thing. You can also do minimum. Let's go minimum, right? It shows the lowest value. So this is really good for, let's say, what's the most, the underperforming uh, subcategory. You can kind of tell from here. Um, another thing you can do is, let's say I want to do sales, right? And I want to know which category makes the most sales as a percentage. Okay. For a while, I used to manually calculate this. But what you can actually do is, if you click on uh, sales again, you drag it in here and you hold the control button, it'll create two sales. Okay. And I can either do it, no, I can't do it there. I can click here and go show values as percentage of grand total. Okay. And the grand total is this number here. Okay, it's the, the, the total val the total sum. That's your grand total. Okay, so if I go show values as percentage of grand total, it's going to do it as a percentage. Okay, so it's telling me that um, about 27% is in furniture. And this is really good for like senior managers because they're just like, what is that? 30%, 20%, 50%, 80%? Where are we? Tell me where we're at. They don't need details. They just want 30%. Okay, good. Right? So then you can do other things as well. You can do percentage of column total. Right, which is actually in this case the same. Um, these ones tend to be more for when you have lots of rows and columns. So let's say I have category and subcategory, sort of like this. Okay, then you can do those kinds of totals, which I'm not really going to cover. This is kind of more like introductory. Um, how do I do? Undo. Right, you can do that. What else can we do? Um, you can do running totals. Where is it? Running total in. Okay, and category is the only one there. And what that does is it adds up in this one, just those. Then in the next one, it does those, right? It sums up these two here. Then the third one sums up all three, okay? So it's really good because it kind of shows your progression, okay, of as it's going up. So this is really good for date-based information. Let's say you're making sales over time. Okay, that's really good for there, right? And we'll leave it at that. And I'm going to add one more thing to show you to kind of just get you started with pivot tables. If I bring subcategory into here, right, I'm going to see all this stuff. Then if I go insert and I go, let's say this one, it will automatically create a chart for me. I don't have to do anything. So this is really good for those who are super, super new to Excel. And you don't really know very much about creating this kind of thing and you just need something quick this is kind of the way to go because once this is set up it just gets reflected here okay and one last thing i'll show you is to get rid of these buttons right you just go hide all okay but what these buttons actually do is they're filters so let's say you only want to see office supplies you don't want to see the rest you can go category okay right so it's super super easy in terms of like doing this. And this is kind of a taste of what analytics is, 
right? Kind of like playing with your information, trying to show it, trying to get insights into your information, right? And that's basically it. So I'll leave it at that as an introductory um, lesson to pivot tables. There is there is so much more with, that you can do with pivot tables, but I don't want to overload you. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later, B.